amazing caramel swirl cookies. Let's see what's cooking. Let's get the facts. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for yo yo max 12. Hello, everyone. Starting off with a large bowl and one cup of butter that's been brought to room temperature four ounces of cream cheese, also at room temperature, and one cup of packed brown sugar. Cream those things together with an electric mixer or by hand until it is light and fluffy. Once it's nicely blended, add in one egg yolk. Blend that in and then add one teaspoon of maple flavoring. This was sold at my grocery store next to the vanilla extract in the baking aisle. Now gradually blend in two and three quarter cups of all purpose flour, adding a little at a time. Now you'll end up with a very sticky dough that needs to be chilled in order for it to be workable. So what I did is I placed it in a plastic bag, I flattened it out nice and flat, and I put it in the freezer for about an hour and that was plenty. Or you can just throw it in the refrigerator and chill it for about three hours. Now while that's chilling, you can make your caramel filling, which is amazing. That's 30 caramels that I put in the microwave for about two and a half minutes on high until they were melted. And then I added in six ounces of cream cheese and stirred it up until the cream cheese was melted and it was all nicely combined with the caramel. Unfortunately, I forgot to press record on my camera when I added the cream cheese to the caramels. So you have to take my word for it. Now this stuff, I would tell you not to taste it because if you do, you might eat it before it gets to the cookies. This stuff's amazing. Once your dough is nicely chilled, remove it from the refrigerator, cut it in half because it's just easier to work with smaller pieces. Put it between sheets of wax paper or parchment paper and roll it out until you get about a quarter of an inch thickness. And just try to work it into a rough rectangle shape. Then place half of the caramel mixture on it and spread it around to within about one half inch from the edge. And then you're gonna roll it up kind of jelly roll style. Now this is a bit of a challenge, especially if the dough is, is warmed up a lot since you've rolled it out. So what I would recommend is you try to start it off and then just use the paper to help you roll it. So just push it up a little bit, take the paper, give it a roll, take the paper right down, just try to even it out and continue until it's all rolled up. Just take your time because the dough can be a little bit sticky and it does stick to the parchment a bit. It's a bit finicky to do this, but I'm telling you it's a well worth the effort. Trust me. Then when you're all done, just roll it up in the same piece of parchment and put it in the refrigerator to chill for a couple of hours. I put mine again in the freezer for about an hour and it was nicely chilled and very easy to, to slice. So using a sharp knife, slice up that roll in one half inch pieces and place those on a cookie sheet that's been greased or lined with a silicone mat. And put them about an inch or so apart. They don't spread too much, but you gotta give them a little bit of room and bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 to 14 minutes or until the bottoms are light brown and you get a little bit of brown on the edges. These cookies are seriously awesome. That filling is amazing and I may even use this filling in maybe a tart form with some pecans or something because it is just so scrumptious. When you first make these cookies, they're a little bit crunchy on the outside and the swirl stays kind of soft. The next day, the cookie softens a bit because of the moisture from the filling in the middle. These would be in maybe my top 15 best cookie I've ever made and I have made a lot of cookies. I have 85 cookies on my cookie playlist. So if you're looking for a cookie recipe, I have all sorts, go ahead and check it out by clicking on your screen or see the link in the description box below the video. Thank you for watching.